viewers and subscribers so welcome to a brand new doctor who review and it is nova on doctor who season seven that was actually broadcast way back in 1970 so 50 51 years ago this season actually came to an end so i'm looking back on this season with four classic stories let's get into it so this is season seven now season seven is one of the best things about classic doctor who because it is John Pertwee's first season as the Doctor. The Doctor is stranded on Earth and have the TARDIS, the, the actual coordinates of the TARDIS, so he doesn't have to pilot the TARDIS um, out of his mind. They've blocked the uh, coordinate thing, so he can't leave Earth. I absolutely love this. You've got, um, you've got Liz Shaw, you've got the Brigadier, you've got Sergeant Benton. and this is the start of the unit family. Now, unfortunately, Liz Shaw does leave at the end of this season so there's a little bit of bit and dabs there so season seven you contain over four fantastic stories sparehead from space doctor and the sandalorians in the, the ambassadors of death and of course inferno now this season it was actually spread over a lot of weeks because you got sparehead from space that is um four parts you got then basically you got from Doctor of the Sandalorians all the way up to Inferno that are seven parts long. I Meaning there's 25 episodes in this season, but I spread over four stories. Now, I absolutely do love this season, so let's get into this. So season seven, you start off with Sparehead from Space. Now, I have got Sparehead from Space on VHS, as you can see. The original DVD release. The special edition DVD release and the Blu-ray Steelbook release of Sparehead from Space. I just love this fantastic. This is the very first appearance of the Autons. You got the Brickadier. I love the whole bit with the Doctor in bed going, Brickadier. Oh, nice, my dear fellow. How nice to see you again. I do love the whole thing between the Doctor and the Brigadier. Go, this is not the man I know. I like it when he goes, ah, splendid. That sounds like the Doctor. And then it turns out not to be, and he doesn't recognise him because it's because he's regenerated. I just absolutely love this story. I love the way how you got like these nesting consciousness um, pods falling into the ground, and then you got the TARDIS materialising. The Doctor falls out of the TARDIS. I absolutely do love this episode because it's just one of the best ones about it. It's four parts long, and you got Elizabeth, um, as I say, you got the Doctor teaming up with Liz to defeat the Autons. The second story of this season is Nova called Doctor Who and the Silorians. Now, this is the Silorians, very first episode. Now, I own this on VHS, Double Pack, and, of course, the DVD release. Now, what can I tell you about Doctor Who and the Silorians? This is just another fantastic sort of story. I do like this one. But I have to say, it does have a bit of downfalls and stuff, but it's the favourite story that introduces the Silorians. I love the whole bit where the Doctor goes, unless you're a Silorian, tell me what you want, the humans will destroy you. I just absolutely love this. And the way you've got that kind of creepy sort of music for them. Um, and the way the Brickadier kills them all at the end, it's just like absolutely got in. Especially when the Doctor thinks so. He never sees the Brickadier eye to eye for a while after this episode. I absolutely do like this one. So the second story, uh, well, basically the third story of the season, I've only got one copy of, and it is... The Ambassadors of Death. Yeah, not many people like this one, but I kind of do a little bit. But I think it just draws out way too much. It's literally way too long. I love the whole creatures of the Ambassadors. The whole thing between the Doctor and the Brickadier in this, the way the Doctor goes to the space lab. 
And then when they bring down Recovery 7, they find out it's been emptied, but it hasn't really been emptied because the people that actually sent the message back to them really does really, is a really kind of a sort of mystery sort of thing. And then you've got an epic car chase with, between Liz Shaw and this group of humans. And it, like Liz is driving Bessie. And I do like how you got like the bit where you got like the Doctor Who thing going on, and then it goes into a little bit, and then you just go now, do like the Ambassadors of Death does. I do like it. So the fourth and final story of this season is no other Inferno. So I got the two DVD copies of this. I got the original release and the special edition release. I can can I tell you about this one? I just absolutely love Inferno. So you've got them kind of digging into our planet's core. Where the Doctor basically takes a trip into a parallel universe. This is the very first time in Doctor Who we see a parallel universe. And it's just an absolutely cracking seven parts. I do like it the way the Doctor literally just goes, Hey! On some certain people. I do like when this is the very first story you see John Pertwee do like martial arts sort of thing on him. I absolutely do like it. I like the whole bit when you got one of them in the car trying to stop him drive, like getting away in Bessie. And the Doctor just like bang on the back of the neck. And he goes flying off. I do like that. Uh, season 7 is, as I say, it's John Pertwee's very first season. It is a really enjoyable season, to be honest with you. It's just absolutely a dynamical scheme of a season. It's just absolutely good. Now, considering that the previous season, it was Triton's last one, you see, see the Doctor, you know the Doctor's going to be stranded on Earth. And then when you go into this season, and you're on the Earthbound stories, the Earthbound stories really do take off in this season. Because they're trying to do something and that I haven't done before. And it is just another fantastic sort of Doctor Who thing to do. <laughs> I just absolutely do love this season. Because it's just another classic season to review for me to review to you. So how do I rank these episodes? Well, this season to be honest with you. So in fourth place, I've put the Ambassadors of Death. Just because it drags out way too much. And I just... I normally skip episodes 4, 5, and 6 and just watch episodes 1, 2, and 3 and then go straight into 7. Shouldn't do really, but I just do because I think it I just think it just drags on way too much than it should do. Uh the next story in third place, I have to say this one. I've put the in back Doctor Who and the Silorians. I put the Silorians. Now, the reason I say the Silurians is just because, one, I just don't really get into it that often as much. I've, I do like part one and two. Part one and two is really good. And again, this is like another seven parts. I normally skip three, four and five and just watch six and seven. Because it is just another one of those seasons that do like stories that kind of do drag out. But it's actually, for in fairness, it is really, really good. If uh, To be honest with you, I've watched it that many times. I know the whole plot of the Doctor Who and the Silurians because it's just one of those stories I kept going back to and rewatch on DVD over and over again. And even when it was re-shown on UK Gold when I stopped over at me nan and granddad's when I lived in, in Market Drayton at the time, I still remember stopping over, turning on granddad's telly and this story was on and I actually watched it with him and... It was just another cracking John Pertwee story. I do like it. And I like the way the Doctor goes, Unless you're Silurians, that's what you want. The humans will destroy you. And then when you have the whole Silurians like spreading out the plague of disease to try and kill us humans off. Yeah, it's actually really, really good. I do like it. So in second place, I've put Inferno. Yes. Inferno in second place. So it deserves to be in second place because it is just another very long kind of a good season like kind of like a story arc i do absolutely like it it's just another sort of perky season well it's a perky story uh, it's actually really enjoyable i like how the tardis travels into the parallel universe i like when you've got those people like in like the kind of werewolf sort of things where they're in green and they're touching basically like ah, 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 and then you turn into one of them i do like that so my number one favorite story from season seven is no other than sparehead from space As you can tell, I just absolutely love Spearhead from Space. I mean, can you find, tell me, anybody who owns all four copies of Spearhead from Space from VHS to Blu-ray? I can't really think of anybody else apart from me. I know I've got it on the 
target in the other box, but I've tidied my room up a bit so I can try and fit everything out and I haven't really got room for the target number book so I've put them inside my TARDIS behind me so yeah this is Doctor Who season 7 review what do I think of it it is another good season it starts off the Perry era really really well do I like it well bloody hell yes I do it's really really good there ain't really a bad story in this season it just feels that some of the stories just do drag on quite a lot like the ambassadors of death for one that one does really really does drag out so normally normally you have to watch it all the way through but if you are someone like me and you know the whole plot you just watch episodes one two and three and then skip to seven try and make it into four parts but it doesn't really work you do miss quite a lot out so then you go back and we watch them like i've done and i still think it drags out but it's very very interesting and it's a very interesting John Pertie story to sit there and watch. Same with Doctor and the Silurians, because I love the Silurians. <clears throat> when they brought back the Silurians in 2010, I wasn't really happy with the whole kind of Silurian design. I think they should have gone back straight into the way they were introduced in this story, and even in 1984. Absolutely fantastic. I do love the Silurians. Inferno, that's a really good parallel universe. To be honest with you, this story, Carol out carry out the parallel universe a lot better than Rise of Summit and Age of Steel. I do prefer this one to the Tenant stuff because it's just absolutely more better to watch than... Not saying that Rise of Summit and Age of Steel is bad, it's just I find this one more enjoyable and more fantastic to watch even though that one, you've got a whole parallel universe with the Summit starting up from which is okay, but I still prefer this one for parallel universe. And, of course, my all-time favourite story, Spearhead from Space. It's just an absolutely cracker of a story to watch. So, let me know in the comments what you think of Series 7. Season 7, sorry. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you, do you think it's a good John Pertwee season? Do you think it's an absolutely cracker of a season like I do? Let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching. And please do like, subscribe and share to my channel. And have a very nice day. Thank you for watching.